are going to cover font and text styles in addition to some text formatting. All right, so uh, first thing, let's go ahead and clean up our project a little bit. It's getting gross, uh, very cluttered here. So let's start with this header one tag. It's around line 22. Go ahead and highlight that up to this uh, class we did here and let's get rid of it. All right, everything here looks fine. Uh, let's dive into over here into our HTML and that uh, class and ID and style we added on the header one. Why don't we go ahead and remove that? And then coming down here with the unordered list, go ahead and comment that out. I'm gonna hit command forward slash. All right, and I'm gonna save that. And that's looking pretty good. I like that. All right, so sweet. So let's talk about fonts, okay? So there's three things that we can really do with fonts. You can do, uh, we can work with font families, uh, font styles, and font size, all right? So let's go ahead and first work with font. So let's go ahead and work with font families. So what I'm gonna do is let's come up to the body, and then after the semicolon here, I'm going to click, hold command, click and click, and then hold command and forward slash. What I'm doing is just commenting this out. Um, I'm setting up our page to uh, be a little bit less distracting. Um, and then we'll go ahead and add a background color. And then let's do uh, three fours. This is a darker uh, gray color. So it's gonna help us see uh, everything a little bit better. And then also on these header ones, go ahead and get rid of the text shadow, okay? We want our page easy and fun and simple to look at. All right, so let's talk about font families. So font families uh, is something that we can add to our pages and it changes the font and the styling of all the text. All right, so most of the time, uh, font families are either added inside of the body or you can create an HTML tag here. All right, and in this case, we're gonna create an HTML uh, selector here. We're gonna go and grab the very, very top here, and this is where we're gonna set the standard of our font families, of what fonts we wanna use. So we can go ahead and type in font family. Now, by default, uh, most, most browsers, what they include is this sans serif and serif is part of the font family, these two styles. And then monospace is kind of more of a generic font family. It can be a fallback. And then if you want additional font families, you just have to download the fonts and uh, link them into your project. So when we are using a, a single word, for example, we're gonna put the property font family, and then we're gonna include our serif, and then end it with a semicolon, all right? Now when we're working with font families, it's a really good practice to have more than one uh, font family. And the reason why is because if some browsers can't pick up on the font style that you're using, you want a fallback font uh, for the browser to pick up on. So we can add multiple uh, font, uh, font styles like this. We can do the um, sans serif. So now what would happen is if when our page loads, if the browser can't uh, recognize or use the serif, then it's going to have a fallback of sans serif. It's gonna use the one of whatever one is after the original one, okay? Now another thing that we can do with font families is say that we did bring in additional fonts into our project. Uh, what you would do is most of these fonts, they're more than one word. And when you link a font style with more than one word into your project, you have to use the double quotations. So I'm just gonna write a font here for example, times New Roman, okay? And then we're gonna follow that up with a comma. And so when we're using a font style that has more than one words, remember, we're putting this in double quotes. All right, so go ahead and save that and we've put that in our HTML, and let's launch our project. All right, cool, so we've cleaned everything up. It's, uh, it's looking a lot nicer. Now what I want you to do is you probably won't recognize that we've actually changed the font. So go ahead and right click and inspect the element. And then what we did is we added the font family to the HTML. Okay, so you can see that it's right here. And we've got our Times New Roman, the serif and the sans serif. Now watch this text carefully when I uncheck this, okay? It barely, barely changes, okay? So what it's doing is it's actually using the serif because Times New Roman doesn't exist 
and then it's doing a fallback on the sans serif, which is very, very similar. All right, so that is font families. Let's uh, come back here, and we can work with something else. We can also work with font size. All right, so underneath our uh, header one, um, what I want you to do is we're going to create, let's just grab the header two class, okay, and we're going to do a font size. And here we can define the size with either a pixel or a, a rem unit or an em unit, whatever one you want to use. Now, um, let's go ahead and with this first example, just add like 30 pixels, okay? Now, when we set a font size with pixels, we are setting a, a very hard uh, size. It's 30 pixels, period, uh, regardless of the viewport size, okay? And it's even regardless of what the default browser size might be of the user using it. So the default browser size uh, in most browsers is 16 pixels, but sometimes users who might have a hard time seeing, they might increase their default browser size to like maybe 20. But using a pixel, you're just hard setting this. You're saying, dude, this is 30 pixels, period. Um, so make sure that you're, you're using these rem units and pixels appropriately uh, as needed. So let's go ahead and dive into our project and refresh it. And you can see that the header two text has now increased font size. Now, one thing I want to uh, point out here is we've talked about specificity and we've got a header two tag here, uh, which is an element uh, selector, which has the lowest value uh, weight, right? So it has a value of one. And then we've got a header two here, uh, which has a um, value of one. Now by default, this header two already has its own font size. So let me come back to the browser. I'm actually going to select the header one here because we haven't messed with it. And if you come into here, by default, header ones have a font size of 2M. Okay, so what this means is it's a font size of 32 pixels. Default browser sizes, uh, font sizes are 16 pixels. We're simply saying this is two times that which is going to be 32. All right, so when we come into our um, header two element here, it's got a, uh, where is it? The font size, see how it's uh, crossed out here? It's 1.5, so this is uh, 24 pixels. We've gone ahead and set our own font size of 30 pixels. So we overwrote uh, the size here because in our cascading style sheet, these are of equal values. They're both defining a font size, but the last one wins. So if I was to take this and cut it and put it above here, um, this one is going to take precedence and this one is going to uh, slap on the original header to font size of 24. All right, so that's just something I wanted to point out there um, so we can work with these font sizes. Now, let's uh, take this class. I'm going to um, move it down here. All right, and then let's go ahead and save that. And on this header two, we, we already know that this second header two is going to win in the styling, and that's okay for this example. And I'm going to add the last type of font property we can use, which is a font style. All right, so I'm going to do a font style. And then it gives us a couple of options that we have here. We have italic, normal, and oblique. Now, italic we know is going to lean the text over. Normal is going to keep it just as is. And then oblique is very similar to italic, but it just doesn't lean so much. So check out what I'm going to do here on this header two, and I'm going to add a font style of italic. Okay, I'm going to close that off. Now check this out up here. I'm going to go ahead and add a font style. Okay, and I'm going to make this. Actually, I'm going to do this one italic. Okay, and then this one. Let me add a space here. We're going to make this one normal. And here's what's going to happen is we already know that these have the same value, the same points. And because this one comes after this, this these style properties are going to win. All right, so we are originally setting the font style to italic. We're going to make these uh, header elements italic. But then as the browser reads down here and comes to the header two, 
we're going to change the font style back to normal on it. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this out. Let me refresh, and you can see that all these other header tags that we have are italic, except the header two that we set back to normal. So that is pretty cool. That is how you use uh, font sizes, styles, and font families. Let's go ahead and dive into text, how we can uh, stylize and uh, adjust the text. So in our body, let's go ahead and the first property, text property we're going to use is a text align. And you can see that we have a text align of center, left, right. Um, there is justify, which will help try to center the uh, content and then put an even distribution of margin on the side on the side it kind of sets it up like a magazine and or we can inherit from the parent element okay and in this case so we can see everything we're doing a little bit better let's go ahead and do a text align of center all right so what I've done is I've said all the text elements which is header tags they can be paragraph tags um, anything like that labels any text element we are going to align center in the center of our body all right, let's check that out. Refresh, boom, it brought everything into the center. So very nice, that looks a lot nicer and it is easier to read. So that is uh, working with uh, text align centers. Um, it's pretty obvious if we were to do a text align right, it's gonna pull the content to the right. Okay, and then same thing with the text align left. But let's keep this to a center. All right, now another thing that we can do is we can actually add uh, text styles. All right, so what I wanna do is, let's do this. These header tags, <clears throat> right underneath it, let's create an anchor tag. All right, and then just uh, give it a dead link, and then close it off, and then just write, click me now. All right, go ahead and save that. And then right over here, what we can do is we can grab the anchor element and we can add some text styles to this. So let's do a, a text decoration. All right, and I'm gonna leave this empty right now. So just uh, leave it as is, I'm gonna save it. And anchor elements by nature, they are blue and they're underlined. Anchor tags have their own styling uh, to it in itself. So come back over to the browser, let's refresh. We've got this uh, click me down here, and if you right click on it, and if we inspect the element, you can see that anchor tags, by default, have a text decoration of none, or of underline, I apologize, and the cursor is auto, so it turns into the little hand. So we can go ahead and close that, and come back over to brackets. So let's give this a text decoration of none, okay? And what this is doing is we already saw that it had a text decoration of underline. Well, now we're actually overriding the property rule on it, the style rule, and we're giving it a text decoration of none. And for the heck of it, just so we can see this better, let's add a font size, and I'm gonna give it 20 pixels, and then we can see this a little bit better. All right, and then come back over here, refresh. Now we've removed the line under it. We can also play with the, uh, the color of the text here as well. All right, so why don't we go ahead and add a color of yellow so we can see it a little bit better. And then let's use a couple more text uh, properties in here. We can actually uh, use a property called uh, letter spacing. And what this does is it's gonna take the letters and spread them apart. So we could do a letter spacing of 10 pixels all right, and so it's gonna take each letter in this anchor tag and it's gonna spread it apart. Let's see how that looks. So go ahead and refresh and check that out. We have removed the text decoration of underline. We have spread the letters out by 10 pixels and we've given it a color of yellow. All right, so let's come back into brackets. And on top of letter spacing, you can actually even do word spacing. All right, and we can leave it at the 10 pixels, and this way it's going to take the words and it's going to spread them apart. We'll probably want to do more than 10 pixels. Let's do 30 and check that out. So now look, now we've spread the words apart. All right, so that's another fun thing that we can do with text. Now pay attention to the text, how it's, uh, we've got a capital letter on each word, right? 
click me now, all has the caps. There is a really uh, cool property that we can use here called text transform. So we can do text transform, and then you can see that it has capitalized fold width. We have lowercase none, uppercase, and in this case, we have everything uh, all lowercase except for the first letter. Go ahead and click on uppercase, close it off with a semicolon, and what this is going to do is it's going to take our uh, text, and regardless of what uh, text syntax is on it, it's going to take everything and put it to uppercase. So go ahead and refresh that, and you can see that it's taken it to uppercase. And we can do the same thing with um, a text transform of lowercase as well. And really the last thing we can do with our text is some text formatting. So to do this, uh, hop over into your HTML file, and then right um, above this anchor tag, let's do it above, um, create a div uh, tag with a class, and we're just going to call this formatting. All right, and then close that off. And then we can go ahead and work inside of here. Now, come over to your CSS and let's just add a class, uh, some style rules to our new class that we got. So go ahead and type in formatting. And then the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to add a font size of 25 pixels. Okay, and then I want to give this a, a line height of 2EM. And then the last thing we're going to add here is a color. All right, and we're just going to put that to white so we can see it on the background that we have. All right, and then inside of this uh, div tag that we've created, uh, go ahead and create another div tag, and then leave it empty. Okay, copy it, and we're going to paste it five more times. So one, two, three, four, five. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to be adding some text inside of this. And the div tag, because it has a display of block on it, it's just going to help these elements stack on top of each other so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so the first, uh, one of the first formats that we can do for text is we can make it bold. So we know that we can do it in here with like a font style we can add like, or a font weight, we can make things bold. But to do it in HTML, uh, we can add one of these tags to it. So it's just a bold tag. And then in here we can write I am so bold. All right, and then we can also use a tag uh, to italicize things. So just use an I. I am leaning over. All right. And then another one we can use is EM. This is for emphasized. I am so emphasized. Okay, I love it. And then, uh, let's see, we've got another formatting tag that we can use uh, that is uh, called strong. And this is kind of similar to bold. It's just less bold than bold when we're using strong. I am so strong. I wish I could put emojis in HTML, put one of those bicep arms in there. That would be cool. <laughs> and then uh, we can use ones um, like this uh, delete. Okay, and what this does is it does a strike through line uh, through the text. Um, please don't delete me. Okay? And then the last one that we can do is uh, a highlight tag. And we simply use that by typing in mark. And then we'll say mark my words. All right, cool. So let's go see how this uh, shows up. All right, so we've got uh, all these different uh, sentences here, and they're going to stack on one another. So come over to here, and let's refresh this. And so this is how you can use text formatting. So we used a bold tag, an italicized tag, an emphasized tag, which is similar to us italicized, but it's not leaning over so much. And then we used the uh, strong tag, which is slightly less bold uh, than the actual bold. And then we've got this uh, strike through, and then a highlight. So that is a wrap for this lesson. We have learned how to use uh, font family, font styles, and uh, font weights. And then we've gone through and we've learned how to use with text and how we can uh, add and remove certain decorations to them. And then also how we can format text uh, to appear uh, differently. All right, so that concludes this lesson. That is a wrap. Let's move on.